괜찮습니까? 훨씬 더 너무 편하네요. 刚才比面换出艾斯之后炸弹也是会给了他们前面一些压力。QQ顺势直接一波前压顺到对面的身。QQ uh, out of that kinetic grasp as they make their way out of the garage and they are just collapsing on top of Hangzhou Spark. 非常漂亮，底部上面差一丝就能踩下了对面强硬踩点。Got Page 这边也是单血，但是哦，这个呃 Architect 这一波。Alrighty, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We carry forward here into the darkness of night as we get ready for our second series. It's a casual 3 a.m. start for this one. So London Spitfire getting ready to go up against the Hangzhou Spark. And like I said, I this could again be a close series. We don't really know. Hangzhou has just been up and down, up and down. London Spitfire, for the most part, looking pretty good. Yeah, but I mean, depending on which Hangzhou we get, this could be a very close one. London Spitfire has definitely been on the, on the rise as of late. Um, Spark has kind of been it depends on which part of the wave we're on right so uh yeah. I, I hope this is a highway for them as we go into things <laughs> talking about london's starting six for this uh matchup our second matchup of the evening pretty unusual actually we're gonna have jmac and bernard in so that's that's nothing crazy glister shui dps but on the support line we have both krillin and fuse so Kind of like second string players, generally speaking, both of these guys on their roles, starting things yep. off for us. So um, definitely not what I expected to see. It's been a while since we've seen Krillin. Um, and hopefully he does well. Yeah, I mean, Krillin, when he's come in, has just done extremely well. Um, you know, at, at least as of late. So uh, not I'm never you know opposed to seeing Krillin come back through. We'll have to see how Fuse is going to fare here today. On the other side, though, we, of course, do have the Hangzhou Spark, so let's go ahead and take a look at their starting six, and it's kind of what you anticipate. You know, there's yeah. that one slot that they have in the support lineup uh, where Mika comes in for IDK from time to time. Yeah, Mika comes in here, and Mika's often been, um, I mean, not at first, Mika was playing mostly Mercy, uh, but it, yeah. now it's kind of a little bit of everything, uh, including even every now and then the Moira. But it could be indication that we're going to see Farah coming out from Hangzhou Spark on control because, you know, we saw that just previously um, between our first two teams, uh, Soul running Illicit on Farah on control. Yep. And running into Ilios, which is definitely a far friendly map uh, at times, especially on Lighthouse. So I could see it. I don't want to go ahead and assume that that's what we're going to see or anything like that uh, from Godspy, but it's something that we have to consider and something that London needs to be aware of as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that either of them could run it. Shui could obviously you know, run it as well yeah. on the side of the London Spitfire. So they, they do have a lot of room uh, for Farah play potentially coming in. You, again, just kind of have to be a little bit concerned if you're a Farah. Illicit obviously made it work extremely well in that one round. Uh, it was University on Oasis. Um, you know, popped off, had a great barrage coming through. But when you're going up against these... Really well-known, star-studded, hit-scan players. You always have to be a bit hesitant about taking something as, you know, mostly immobile as that Farah, because, I mean, you've got Glister on one side and Gods be on the other, so these guys are still a class. Yeah, certainly true. I, I think that, you know, when we go into this first map, we're going to learn a little bit about what these two teams take on the meta is, um, you know, which team is preferring the Zarya, for example. Do we see any Sombra out of either of these two? Um, and, you know, are these teams going to be, you know, just locked into running that sort of Ash composition that we've been seeing? Uh, or are we going to see the Widowmaker on Ruins? Um, will we see yeah. any McCree? You know, these are the questions we're going to have answered shortly. But I, I'm i guessing, just based on what we're seeing so far in Asia and what we saw in North America, we're going to see, for the most part, double shield, which is kind of, yeah. ever since Goats was gone and Sigma came to the game, it's like, if there's not a hero pool, that's what we've been seeing forever. So it's not a shock. Um, but it's crazy to see how viable snipers still are, even with double shield. So looking forward to it. Yeah, I mean, people are just, you know, taking different uh, approaches to try to get angles to, to play around the double shields. We saw Happy doing a wonderful job of that on Havana. Um, you know, fits as well to a certain degree. So these guys still aren't wary about playing around that. It's also... You know, them relying on their teammates to set up picks, you know, whether it's kind of hurting people out from behind the shields or having halts coming in to pull people into line of sight and whatnot. 
um, to, to set up for that the, the sniper play to come in. So Beam's been doing a pretty good job about it, and I'm happy to see more of it. Widowmaker, obviously, always a pretty fun uh, hero to watch when people really start popping off and getting it, getting in the groove. So I'm not opposed to I, more of that action. Yeah, I just took a peek in our lobby. Looks like all the players are finally ready um, to go. We yeah. had a little bit of a delay. It should so. be... Should be jumping in. London was, you know, they were taking their time, moseying on in, and uh, getting everybody situated. Just like they but did at the like beginning of the league, be. you know. <laughs> Yay. Um, but it, uh, we are entering game yes. now, so we should be jumping on to Ilios here in just a minute to get the action started and seeing who's going to be able to start off this series with a victory. Um, you know, very back and forth in our first set of the evening. I'm hoping for more of it, because you know what? If we're going to stay up late, we might as well go the distance. Just give me five maps. Hell, let's do six again. Uh, you know, go for six. We didn't we didn't quite get there for Soul Dynasty. Look, I've, it's a, but it's, let's, let's aim for it. You know, we're already potentially in our 15 to 21 map zone, you know, where it's like 15 maps. If we if all three go to fi uh, game five, 21, 12 went to seven. We're yep. still... We could still hit the 15 to 21 zone, you know? Maximum maps. I'm about it. Me too. Absolutely about it. Well, no surprise so far, as Architect will just be showing the Genji. And Mika's going to be on the Brigitte. So, it seems like no far, at least here for Ruins. And Cluster for now hovering on the old Soldier 76. I'm not sure if he's going to be swapping off for that one. We've seen, uh, we've seen him come out from time to time. He's at least going to be swapping over onto... The Symmetra for now with Shui moving to the Genji, so in all likelihood, uh, we will be seeing some Tracer play, perhaps. No? Okay, Widow. Widow v. Widow. Widow v. Widow. So it's Ruins. Not a surprise. Yeah. Not a shocker. I was wondering if we're going to see any Ash mixed in here or, you know, I mean, with these two, you've got to, uh, you know, you've got to really respect. Like, if you run the Ash, you might just end up getting outclassed here, even though you're looking for, like, four point presence with the ultimate, the Bob. And the dynamite. Go with oh. the pick. Yeah. Already shutting down Shui. Gives Architect a lot of room to start moving forward and get the advantage towards the Dragon Blade. A little bit of pressure going to be applied now. Bernard is in the corner. Everybody collapsing around the Sigma. Stun will come out from the accretion, but there's just too many members of the Hangzhou Spark surrounding him, so he does get taken down. And J Mac trying to exit. Not going to be allowed to do so, but seems like they don't have the damage quite there to go ahead and finish off that Orisa. So he does live to fight another day, but with Shui getting picked early, he's going to be at 49%, and Architect is at 75 for the Dragon Blade. So major advantage here for the Spark. Yeah, looking really good so far here in terms of the Blade build. I mean, that's something that can guarantee you, you know, that almost 99% lead. If you can make this Blade advantage work into your favor, I mean, it's, the gap's been narrowed a little bit here by Shui, but if he gets that last part of it, has a successful Blade, then suddenly, I mean, the map's wide open for Hangzhou Spark. Turns of Ult Economy. Trying to close that last 10% here to make this happen. Going to get to the Ant Matrix first. Goes ahead, pops that one out. Shui dashing through. We'll take down QOQ. See, they just play around, away from the Ant Matrix. And then you want to chase him, try to get these kills. Mortality Field comes out from Krillin. Very well timed to keep Bernard alive. They clean up here on Mika and Bebe as the flip comes through. So Hangzhou Spark not quite able to make it to 60%. As London Spitfire will take the lead, but both teams have a plethora of ultimates. Yeah. Nearly six online for the Spark the as they get ready to try to take his point back. Sightline advantage goes to London, but otherwise, I mean, this fight is pretty even across the board. And that's, there's your sightline advantage working out uh, for you. Yep. As uh, Mika gets his head taken off here on the approach. But Hangzhou Spark, I think you're going to have to rally engage this, which means that London can react and have the secondary and better rally. And London can certainly take a huge lead here if they just play passively. They're going to use the Flux, though, and play up forward. Yeah, Flux used in the choke. Bebe going to be taken down, but Architects slipped in behind Glister and manages to finish him off. And now Shui is going to be gone, so no DPS on the table for the side of the London Spitfire as they try to hold out here. Second Blade's going to be coming through the rally, going to be rolling confused as they try to stay sustained. Push him back, the increase won't connect. Falls low, but gets top back up. Hangzhou Spark now on the point as London tries to take the lead, but with Bernard falling, it's going to have to be the retreat call coming in. Hangzhou do manage to go ahead and pick this up. This is looking really good for Hangzhou now, too. Supercharger committed to try to get some exit kills there. They'll make sure they can hold on to the point, but they've got Flux available as Hugo Q is being shown on your screen right here. But sightline advantage, also huge as we've seen 
you know, over the years of Overwatch, but also even on this first round of our second series, how important it can be. They're going to match each other's ultimates here for Ultimate Vision. Try to find that angle there onto Bebe. Doesn't get the headshot, though. Just a body tag, but Mika's still going to fall. Bernard finding that pick off. Also pokes up, looking for another one. The Flux comes out from QOQ, drops him back down to the ground, but the kills are not there to follow. The Supercharger, in the meantime, is there for the London Spitfire, powering their attacks, and you can see it at work as they just absolutely destroy Q QOQ. 99% of the board, however, for the Hangzhou Spark as the flip gets ready to come in for the London Spitfire, and both teams exhaust the majority of their ultimates. Dragon Blade's getting ready to come up for both of these Genjis, and that's kind of have to, gonna have to be the, the centerpiece of the team fight for both squads. Yeah, I mean, this is gonna be the fight that decides the map, essentially, here. Everything else is pretty even. A pick from either Widow can just end this round, essentially, as well. I mean, Very it, true. If you get a pick, I mean, then suddenly the, the Genji dives in, gets the last part of the blade, and it all just lines up from there. QOQ, very aggressive position. He might get punished. He does drop down. Blades right, out first for Shui, or oh, available, I should say, first for Shui. Bernard has now gotten his flux, goes ahead, picks up what seems like the entire damn team, drops him back down. Mortality Field will save them for a little bit longer, but Shui with a blade does go ahead and slice through that. Gonsby, however, has found two headshots. An architect with a blade of his own gets rid of the enemy Genji. Goes into the back, he's looking for Glister, who just can't turn around fast enough to react to what is happening to him. Does fall, but architect will suffer the same fate. They come back in, Bernard gonna be bile driven into oblivion as they look to get the finishing blow now onto Fuse, he's got a sliver of HP. Fuse when he swaps over, gets that grapple going, manages to roll him over. J-Mac, pushing it out here with the Wrecking Ball of his own, and Fuse comes up with yet another huge kill, shutting down Krillin. Fuse nearly has a rally up, needs to make his way back over the point to try to keep his teammates alive. You see the body block coming in as they try to deny J-Mac access. The flip is there now for the Hangzhou Spark. Way. Very well topped up, Chase is in, but the Mega Pack is there to keep him alive. QOQ swinging with a Reinhardt swap, manages to find Shui, and Bernard just does not stand a chance. They get a Shield Bash on the Kushway, but the damage is not there to follow. Shui and Clister still going to be dead out of the fight. Now J-Mac gone. The delay tactics have been exhausted from the side of the London Spitfire, and Hangzhou Spark will take this first round of Ilios 100-99%. to and the biggest takeaway is the chaos here between both these two teams. They're both playing a very scrappy style. They're looking for every fight possible, not trying to regroup, not trying to, to set up for big ult combos. And this is uh, the moment where Gushway comes in here uh, for the swap to the Wrecking Ball. And actually, it secures the point. Gets that kill on a Bernard, takes out the Brigida here. Use, actually, no, I thought he does, yeah, he does get him. Yeah. Say, like, pretty sure roll he does. Through for it. And then, you know, things start to fall apart from there for the London Spitfire. They never regain their composure. But look at this. First Sombra of the series. You know, obviously, Ruins kind of has its own meta. And no Farah, so we were wondering about that for Vika potentially on the Lighthouse, but not going to happen. So, going to be a huge difference in stylistic choices here with Blister trying to make those Widowmaker one shot picks happen versus bolt based play on the spark. Hack on Bernard. Scottsby is just going to be in the farm where he can. Architect trying to make his way out, but we doing a good job of pursuing forward. But he can't get the kill. So the armor packs come in and he does steadily get pushed back up to full. Gonsby finds a kill on the Glister. With so many members low here on the side of the London Spitfire. Architect starts seeing red, tries to go into that dash. Kill on a Bernard. Doesn't finish him off, but it's still a bloody back and forth coming through as the tank line gets broken down for the Hangzhou Spark. London Spitfires, however, are perfectly healthy and they have the inside track on the points. They get set up. They get that first cap coming through. Great shield bash there. Things nicely for themselves. Yeah, looking for the kill on the Architect. They will find it. And Mika falling as well. Godspeed, though, has the EMP ready to roll. Could just go ahead and wait, perhaps, for the Dragon Blade to be ready as well. Yeah, I think that's what they should wait for. Uh, Bebe should be able to get the stand up boost super easily. Look at him, he's already surged up 15% since I started even that sentence, and he's just 20% away. Uh, they don't even have to wait for the EMP for it. Maybe get EMP first, and then he'll get the nano off. Looks like you're gonna look for this drop down EMP, a really effective one. It's being kind of greedy here, but since he's unscouted, it's totally fine. Here it goes. Yeah, tosses that one out, manages to find four members. He Immortality field coming through, but a massive Bionade connects from Bebe. Throws in the nano boost as well, and Architect goes in. Manages to find one, pushes forward, gets Blister in the pack, finds Krillin. 
very nicely executed here by the Hangzhou Spark. Flip will come in, 52% built up for the London Spitfire. Yeah, well executed, really nice drop down there from Godsby, had the perfect angle, was unscouted. Played greedy because of the information he had. Fuse has a rally for the re-engage re here though, and even though they don't have nano boost, they do have their own Dragon Blade, so the all is not lost here for London Spitfire. They actually have a really nice composition to re-engage with here. Bionade connects, but they stay strong, they heal through it after it fades away, and they have a lot of ultimates to look for the retake. Yo Q, building up that energy, but he's not gonna be taken down if we assassinating him before he can use the primal rage to keep himself alive. Grab, toss in. Supercharger is just gonna be the first thing to fall. Thing else on the back side of that Zarya ultimate. Now they make their way over onto the point. This is very dangerous for the Hangzhou Spark. You do not want to let this get entrenched on the point with the double shields. Bionic connects onto fourth. HP bar is still dangerously low, and Krillin going to be knocked off the side of the map. Yushu tries to turn things around. Sun comes in, Tweet draws out his blade. Gets to the Bebe, looks for another target. Takes a little bit of damage. Continues to be assaulted from all sides, but will be kept alive. I have to say, uh, I thought that was really well executed from London. They knew they had better uh, ability to lock down the point and step on it. They got the cap early, forced Hangzhou to take a fight on their turn. So we got the blade late because of it. And they still have great tools about to come online here. They're, if they win this fight, they just win the round. And even if they lose it, they've they got the a huge advantage. Yeah, buying more time as QOQ will be taken down. Their way back around towards the point, looking for that stun, the accretion not quite going to connect, the shield bash will. Bionade, however, goes down. An Architect manages to cut Glister down to size. Bernard will manage to equalize there as they force out the OT, but with him going so low and J-Mac just resetting off the side of the map, Hangzhou Spark will live to fight again. EMP going to be the biggest hurdle for the London Spitfire to leap over here. Speaking of leaping, Gusha going to take Shui out on the back end. They can rally this fight into a Supercharger Blade. I mean, it's absolutely obtainable, in fact, realistic to expect that they could make that happen. The question is, will they force the EMP fight first, then reset? I mean, if they if they have to be decisive if they want to reset, because they need to, like, reset now. And if they just kind of sit here like this, they don't get two fights. They get one and a half. So now they're kind of forced to take this fight through EMP. So they're on a Godspeed, but they cannot finish them off. Bought them some more time. Perhaps forced a rally early. Godsby comes back down, detected. Jumps away with the translocator again. Just trying to get that set up. Under Spitfire, rush their way over to the point. The window comes out, but Architect manages to find two. Takes down Krillin, now Glister. He's just putting this fight, this team, on his back. Ults be damned, might not be needed. Primal Rage comes through, looking to send Bernard sailing off the side of the map, but it doesn't matter. Baiting with the Bionade will just finish him off, and now no one can touch the point. Again, 199%, but two rounds is all it's going to be. Hangzhou Spark, they strike, and uh, they strike well. London Spitfire fall here on Ilios. Yeah, Shui slept again by Bebe there in that last moment as well, so he can't even try to counterblade. The EMP execution was great. And, you know, we saw two great EMP fights with Godsby on the Sombra there for Hangzhou Spark where he got the perfect EMP he needed at the exact right moment to execute it. Well played by Hangzhou. London put up a good fight. I have to say Fuse has been pretty impressive on the uh, on the Brigida so far. Um, yeah. you know, we haven't seen a ton of him this season. He came in, looked pretty solid. Um, so it makes a little bit of sense, you know, why we're seeing him here just because perhaps he's performing well in scrims on the hero. We'll see if he stays in when we head into the further maps in the series, but I feel like London didn't have any glaring issues overall throughout those two rounds. I thought they played very well. It looks like we might have another close series on our hands. Yeah, we very well might. I mean, again, if this is any indication, it seems like that is definitely going to be the case. But that's map one out of the way. Hangzhou Spark starting things off 1-0. We'll see if they can move up to a 2-0 start after the next map or if London can give us yet another tight series. We're going to find out in a bit when we come back from the break. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League.
The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. Switch today and rank up to America's largest 5G network, T-Mobile. And by State Farm. For auto, home or renter's insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And welcome back. We're just one map into the series between the London Spitfire and the Hangzhou Spark. The latter whom have started off with a 1-0 here after a victory on Ilio. So a strong start for the Hangzhou Spark, but very close on the two rounds that we saw. 199% in both of them. Yeah, I mean, back-to-back -back close battles, but at the end of the day, London Spitfire kind of getting taken out by better ult usage in the end. The Sombra EMPs we saw there finding more value. Should we getting shut down by a sleep dart as well in that last moment? So as we head into Route 66, I think Sombra is still very viable here. We could see Widow v. Widow with long sight lines mm -hmm. on A, for example, and to a lesser extent B. And obviously when you go to C, the um, defending team has that opportunity. Definitely going to see uh, double shield here, I think. You, you know, dive viable but likely. risky at best, I'd say, with the Winston. I think it's just going to be Arisa Sigma here. I'd love to be proven wrong because, you know, I'm kind of tired of the double shield myself. But, uh, you know, we'll see. <laughs> or is it just got put back in? <laughs> I know, but I, mean, I saw enough. I've seen enough, okay? I know, yeah. <laughs> I see, I've had Five enough. Five seconds. That's, this is not the that's intricate. That's all we need. You know, double shield's not like the intricate sick goats meta where you're like, ooh, this is like, if people like to see people shoot guns, it's kind of boring. But otherwise, it's like if you if you like chess and you like, you know, big macro yeah. plays, it's awesome. But this is just kind of like, you know, it's, it's not the same for me, okay? I'll pull a hex here and just be like, you know what? I'll just tell you guys I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. You don't have to. Not it's everybody's not my gonna favorite. Like every I mean, I, I like people complain. People will always complain about a meta, no matter how how exciting <laughs> or you know, micro macro focused it could possibly be. There's people who absolutely hate dive, even though Silver Gale is one of the best metas that we've ever had. It's I don't know. It it it, it, it kind of reminds me of like um, le like Legend of Zelda games. Because like when Go Wind on, Waker yeah, please came out, tell. everybody like complained about Wind Waker, and then when Twilight Princess came out, everybody was like, "Man, Wind Waker was great. Twilight Princess sucks." And then we got Skyward Sword, which was actually kind of just objectively bad. But and then you know everyone got the rose tinted glasses on for uh, for Twilight Princess again. Well, so it's yeah. just like every time you advance, you start to be fond of what you had in the past. Well, I mean, Breath of the Wild was like really widely acclaimed. Now everyone's like, "Yeah, but I went back and played, and your weapons break a lot." I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> Uh, Breath of the Wild 2 so, is so good, but Breath of the Wild 1 was bad. Yeah, well, I mean, look, double shield here. I, I like to cast it. I mean, I like to cast all metas Overwatch because that's just, you know, the, you, the meta changes, it evolves. But double shield versus double shield again. Um, and that's not a surprise for the map, especially with the snipers that you're going to see here. And it's going to be to get the Widow defense. God's, God's beginning to be set up. So far, hasn't gotten really any shots. You can see Architect is pushing right into the middle of the London Spitfire. He's just behind them actively right now, but unfortunately, unable to get the kills. Godspe finally finds one, but London Spitfire have broken the defense of the Hangzhou Spark. And God's beyond his lonesome with a sliver of HP is just trying to hightail it out of there as best as possible. I mean, but uh, he's been found. There's limits to how much you can outplay as the defending Genji when you're kind of diving into immortality fields, faster respawns. They're set up more defensively. They have an Ash. You have a Widow. You don't want to be that forward usually. He built the faster blade, but cost him his life, but not by a lot. Yeah, I don't know. Risky decision there from Architect. Yeah, I mean, I, I liked the kind of praise and play that he was showing. And for a while, wasn't getting punished. But once the rest of the team kind of collapsed around him, he didn't have many options of getting out of that sticky situation. We do have Godsby swapping over onto the Ash, so we'll be a little bit late to build up that bomb. But there you go. That's going to be a good start. Dragonblade, however, going to be pulled out for three after they lose out on one. Slicing them in midair for the Immortality Kill. There to greet them as they hit the ground. Still, he's managing to set up for a couple kills coming through, but Architect with a blade of his own, trying to turn things around. Managed to find Hylie, who has since, be swapped, since been swapped in. I don't remember if we actually mentioned that. And they will be able to stop the cart from moving into point A. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we did, but newsflash. Our bad. Um, Hylie's in. Yeah, Krillin out. Uh, Fuse, though, I mean, I, I would have been sad if Fuse was pulled out after one map after his performance there. I thought he did quite well. I thought they said that Krillin did it, well. but... He's, yeah. he's played better. All right, well, Dragon Blade time to build here is going to be pretty high around this corner for both teams. You know, you can't play as aggressively as they were just previously against each other. No 
no success there on that dynamite, but he's got Bob available. Faster than God's doing the lead swap to the Ash. Can be one way to, you know, lock this second point down. Or first point, excuse me. And Bob gonna be sent out. So that supercharger gets a little bit of damage in, but Bebe will go ahead and finish that one off. It doesn't last very long with the help of the supercharger there from way. Barrier's just going to be placed down from either side as they continue to chunk out on each other. They move up, testing the card. A minute and five seconds now remaining for the London Spitfire. We'll see how they try to break through. Yeah, Matrix is going to be used from both teams right up and close in front of each other's faces. But it is the London Spitfire who managed to push out of the gas station. They start to find some kills. They'll finish up the bomb. They got Gods being QOQ. Architect, though, trying to, try, trying to swing things back in their favor. Draws out with the Dragon Blade, but just doesn't have ample support. Can't really get on top of anybody. Just slashing in air. By now the Flux coming through. Architect, yeah, dashes away. He does buy time. That is absolutely true. But they get the Flux kill here on the Gushue. The cleanup starts coming through. QOQ jumping in, just trying to buy a little bit of extra time, build up closer towards that flux. Make sure that uh, he's just going to be sent back to the spawn room with the rest of his squad. No one really in position to capitalize on any split spawns that could have come through. Yeah. It looks like we didn't have any either for the Hongjo's part. I didn't really agree with the Blade either, but I was feeling like maybe if he had gotten Killer 2 and the rest of the team respawned and he kind of come back, came back to the point, it would have been okay, but... Like you mentioned, everyone at Lund Spitfire was kind of all grouped up and on the point, so there was just no angle for him to, to catch someone off guard. The stun came through immediately from Muse, so rough times. Cards just rolling here oh, for London, steady, though. Yeah. I mean, there's a Flux commitment. Flux has come through, Fortify out from J-Mac. So low impact ult. High impact kinetic grasp though. So you can put a shielding. Blade now comes out from three steps. Stunned up there for the moment. Dashes into the back line. Manages to find Mika. Gets a second as Gushway will fall, but Gonsby cuts him down. It's going to be a three for two in advantage of the London Spitfire thus far. The Supercharger still empowering multiple members of London. I mean, it's important that you say things like three for two right now in these chaotic fights because actually, I mean, that's that's really what's differentiating the fights. is just one extra kill on either side. Ooh. It's a crazy melee. It's a frenzy. That we're watching right Dodge now. There. Yeah, Gonsby barely avoiding that accretion. Nope. They still would have been safe. But London Spitfire still do get staved off, so late not nearly as impactful as they would have liked. Flux is gonna be online for Banar, but every other ultimate's pretty far away right now for London, whereas Supercharger and Flux, damn close for Hangzhou. Yeah, there's a window of time where they can try to flux for this fight though, London that is. Look for a kill, they're gonna go for it. Yep, no catches follow. two, Fortify goes out, but Shui onto the high ground instantly takes down Godsby. Very nice deflect into the headshot, I would assume. QOQ taken down as well. Bernard can just occupy this high ground. As I say that, he will get tracked off by a halt, so good displacement there from Gushui. Make sure that he cannot just sit in that prime position, but now everybody contained inside the saloon is just getting ripped to shreds, so Cart looking like it's gonna, yeah, it's gonna glide in. But again, good time buys here for the Hangzhou Spark. They continue to drain the clock, ensuring that even if London finished this map, they're not gonna have a strong time. Yeah, there. definitely not. Now, this is a place where I feel like Godsby could swap back to Widowmaker if he wanted to. Um, you know, Dynamite's still gonna be strong here, Bob's gonna be strong, but you have long sight lines, and you have this window where you're not gonna contest B, and you can just kind of respawn and have uh -huh. that sight line advantage. I'm a little bit surprised he doesn't swap. Big wraparound, actually, yeah. for the rest of the Hangzhou Spark. I thought QOQ was going to be left out here on an island, but, well, the nice halt comes through with the window, and they just strike him down. So He brought some It was friends. a cheeky little wraparound from the Hangzhou Spark, but it doesn't really net them much other than a little bit of extra time off the bank. No one wants to be the friend that gets brought to the deserted island, but that was, uh, QOQ had, I think, two others that came over there with him to lose a 3v6 fight. He bought some time, but the question is for what, right? I mean, they already had sightline advantages. Um, that they weren't really using. Bob's out early. Here's the blade on the choke. Bob's out, blades there. Immortality field, buying some time. Manages to find Bebe, but the dynamite will finish him off. Flux goes through onto the Bob, who's still just taking some pot shots where he can. Dynamite goes through, and Lennon's still pressed up around the side here. Flux gonna be used by Bernard. Immortality field comes through. Doesn't last very long. The Bob rolls in from Godsby. Just forcing London back towards the high ground out of that line of sight. Architect managed to buy j though with a right-click shuriken. Now goes out for the blade. Takes down Bernard, takes down Fuse. And with a 4K coming in, now a 5. Architect again just looks incredible with again. Yeah, he's making 6. He killed everybody. He killed them all. 
total team wipe from him. London Spitfire, really, I mean, they don't have great tools coming into the end of this point. But they don't have line of sight advantage. Well, I mean, technically they could with how Godsby is about to do this wrap around here. He's a very high risk. I mean, if he dies, he's got fast spawn, but this is really greedy. But if it works, man, it, it pays off big time. Going for it. He sees Glister. He gets the headshot. Oh, so He's close. for the rest. Uh, the shift comes out from Highly to get the healing going through, plus the right clicks. They do keep him alive. It was a nice little cheeky play, but it doesn't let them much in the end. Grecian's not going to connect on the Architect as the Amp Matrix is there from Highly. Ancho playing well around that Amp Matrix, which is now expired. There are multiple people to kinetic grasp coming through from Bernard as he tries to occupy the high ground continuously. Pressure being applied forces him back a bit as he views sticking close to him, ensuring his safety. Sweet. He's on top of God, he manages to find one as Bernard now presses the issue, throwing that barrier out and advancing towards the Hangzhou Spark steadily. QOQ, however, about to have a flux online, and that could be absolutely huge in their defense of this. But he's gonna pop the flux, and the Bob will just finish him off. Poorly timed, just didn't have the HP to try to go for that play. The Bob finds another one, Architect gonna be gone. And in OT, the London Spitfire will be allowed to finish Route 66. Very, very narrow finish here, but you know, the timing of the Flux, very poor with the Bob release there. They are not able to look for that final lift off into, you know, what would have been a numbers disadvantage fight, but a one where they, they could have bought some time for those respawns to come through. Hangzhou Spark, you know, there's a really big opportunity here to get a much better time bank. I don't know if this is going to be that very Bob, I guess so. Just, we're going to see if he's the last part of it. He tosses in right when QoQ. Like he's actually there already when QoQ presses Q. Yeah. And he's just taking so much damage. And, you know, you get that little bit of damage on the start of the flux, but doesn't last long. It's hard, it's hard too, because when you look at the rest of the Hangzhou Spark <laughs> that was alive that were trying to come back, like even if he had bought time there, it probably they probably wouldn't have been able to do anything else. I mean, at this point too, with like the finish already being an overtime finish, the seconds don't go into negative. It's not like, well, we bought even more time after overtime. But it was, uh, you know, un unlucky moment for sure, but probably not too impactful at the grand scheme of things. Can we have an experimental mode where they actually just code Bob into his own hero? I mean, just like you pick him, he's a DPS. Is he a tank or a DPS? Or just like, yeah, some kind some kind of like special little uh, event mode. And he just becomes a playable character for a short period of time. I'd love that. I think that'd be fun. That'd be fun. But is he a tank or DPS? I don't know. I've never said this about any bond or anything, but I stand Bob. <laughs> I thought you were going to say he's a supporter or something. I was like, well, I don't know. <laughs> no. I just, uh, that's just how much I love Bob. Everybody loves Bob. Oh, 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 that whip. Card. Oh, man. The whip shot. Absolutely great for Mika since J Mac off the side of the map. And that is just going to be, you know, the breakdown Another one. of the defense here. Mika does it again. Finds Bernard. Shui will take down one, but that's as good as it's going to get. Will not be allowed to exit the Hangzhou Spark. London um, Spitfire, a lot like, of room to work with. London Spitfire, like, remember last time when, when you were on defense and you just like all in down to us in neutral and you, we had a uh, superior position? We're just going to do that to you and then you're going to have better ults and push towards A. It feels like the exact same thing happened on both sides. You know? It just feels like we watched yeah. that same thing occur twice, just from a different perspective. Oh, Ant Matrix is out. Baby on top of the girls. And London, I mean, they don't really have a choice. <laughs> they just kind of have to wait. Now we'll start pushing forward. Let the barriers come through, and they use their own Ant Matrix, but Gonsby finds the shot on the J-Mac. Yeah. Takes him down, and suddenly, yeah, this, uh, this, this Ant Matrix doesn't really mean, uh, you know, anything. Yeah. I mean, this so is just going to be a... They're just moving forward. Yeah. No one can touch this. Massive time bank here. Four minutes, two seconds now as the doors get ready to open. I'm a little bit surprised Godsby wasn't running more of the or excuse, more of the Widowmaker just because he's so good at it too. And now that they've got this advantage and you know there's just not much Spitfire can do to retake that at the moment in terms of sight lines. Like you can keep running this Widow for a really long time and be more lethal and have more you know straight up killing power. Yeah. Right now he's just on cart duty, but in a moment when he gets around this corner, he's just gonna pop up the left of this high side or whatever it's called high side 
Get it because it's the high ground. So it's Devs had a funnel of time with that one. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Architect going on a bit of a recon mission. Poking forward. I think he old might. London is playing. The, this is <laughs> the safest that we have ever seen a team play. Yeah. The cart has been free rolling. He's like, where for are a they? Minute. I think he wants to bait immortality field and then set up for. Well, he was perhaps looking for that. Now he just wants to get a free kill. Yeah, he's just, he's just gonna kill Shui. Cause why not? Bob's gonna get stunned. The Bob is the only one playing the objective right now. London is still inside point C. Well, now they don't really are they have much just of a conceding choice. two thirds of the map? I guess so. At this point, they don't really have much of a choice. I mean, if they fight here, it's like. Well, they don't now. Yeah. They should have done. They should have earlier for for sure. They didn't have great ults, but. I mean, you've got to try to fight the neutral game. Yeah. Especially when your opponent's yeah, walking out with six ults, so it's not like you're getting beaten ult charge or anything. I don't know. Just drain some time off the clock. That was pretty passive play. I mean, even for London. I, 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 I agree with your frustrations. <laughs> but it's I mean, four in the morning. I can't handle this right now, London. Well, I mean, this could be a huge time bank disparity if things continue. And look, yeah. there's the Widow pick. Behind the headshot, Pluck's gonna be coming through. Architect gets rid of Hylie, and yeah, it is just gonna be Pink filling the kill feed. Architect. Bernard's left alive, he's up near the cart. They're going, they're gonna go, they're gonna go ahead, finish him off, and I, London just have no ults. Yeah. They're gonna have an amp matrix, try and shut down a supercharged dragon blade. Yeah, this blade is gonna be nasty. I think this might just be like a 3.30 time bank finish. <laughs> Maybe like 3.15 I, if they delay, but. I think London's in big trouble here, and I don't, I don't think they have, unless Hangzhou makes a big mistake, they don't have much room to work with here. Look at the sight line advantage, even for God's Beyond Widow here in short range. He can kill anyone who shows their head. Here's the blade. Blade is out, finds Glister. Stun comes through. See him just slashing away. No, kill three, feed comes in. 438. 438. More than 430. Wow. I mean, London had a decent attack. They they didn't have the greatest time bank, but there were some really good moments to them. Ult-wise, ult they made, had some intelligent decision-making. You know, you could be pretty happy with London's push. You're like, okay, okay, maybe London turns the series around a little bit, maybe. Yeah, solid defense. A, it gets taken away from them off of their aggressive forward uh, defense, just like we saw fail from Hangzhou. So fair, fair, okay. Same. Both teams made the same mistake there. But then, B, they lose a fight and then just... Don't recontest, despite there being time to, and that they had ults, and then C, they let them push up the cart pretty significantly because they had no choice after uh, the first fight that went badly outside of C, or excuse me, outside of B, and then at that moment where they used all their ults and lost the fight, it's like, well, maybe Glister can kill somebody, but then Architect just blades him and kills him, and I don't know. So my, my commentary of the situation is, is uh, Perhaps as unfortunate as, as London's defense there, I don't know. I, you, you, I mean, I get it. You're grasping at straws to try to figure out what just happened. <laughs> okay, now Hangzhou's just gonna do this thing again, right? Where Architect just dives into the team and then gets stunned and dies, and then London pushes all the way to A. London's like, okay, maybe they'll do that thing again. We only have one minute, but we could probably get to A, right? <laughs> They're gonna play so forward. I don't know about this. Okay, they get a kill at least. It's not based on okay. their positioning, it's based on Godsby's accuracy. Let's see if the strat works, though. Decent amount of damage there onto Architect with the Dynamite, but we'll just be topped up and keep playing aggressively. Godsby going for the pop-up shot. Body tag onto Glister. The shot would have killed. Now see Shui advancing through the train car, or at least poking out that way. Let's start making his way up. A lot of damage here onto the DPS members of the London Spitfire. Still playing far forward. Oh, J-Mac nearly getting sent off the side again. Mika's got these whip Not shots. Poop, but yeah, the distance was, just wasn't there. Bernard almost sent off as well. Kind of slides along the rocks. Could this be the like one of the first zero, never mind. I was gonna say one of the first zero distance cards that we've ever seen. But they do finally get touched up on top of that one. Get a little Big bit of distance. Dynamite. The dynamite. Pretty huge there from Glister. We'd love to have that Bob online. God's going to be taken down. Bernard finding the pick and Architect falling low. He'll be kept alive at least for a little bit longer as Fuge gets up close and personal with the members of the Hangzhou Spark. It seems like finally the passive play has allowed them to break through. I mean, and they will get a good amount of distance here. 
Look at the ults on London Spitfire side versus Hangzhou. Look at the time bank Hangzhou has. Did they really need... You know, if, if Hangzhou had one minute and London had four, I'd be like, oh yeah, you gotta stand up there. You gotta you gotta buy that time. You gotta do anything you can. Because when they do their attack, they're just gonna crush you. But I feel like London's got a really fighting chance with how aggressively Hangzhou played. They've got ult advantage for this next fight. But they could just take A and then keep the cart rolling. I feel like it was a bit excessive how far forward Hangzhou played last on this defense and on the last, but you know their time bank is big. Looking for the flux, they hold them together. Yeah. Pull up up, QOQ gonna be dead in air. Now the dragon blade coming through the immortality field already finished off. Pushes forward, gets rid of Gucci. Has to reshoot, but dashes in. And the kills continue to fly forward for the London Spitfire. The two ults used, three ults rather, used in that fight with the Ant Matrix kind of preceding it. You know, I mean, Still like... Still have a supercharger and that bomb. In, in an alternate universe, Godsby and Architect play back. Architect gets the first Dragon Blade. They blade on A. They trade that that fight uh, similarly. If Godsby gets a pick, there's a lot of ways that could have gone differently. But Hangzhou just didn't have the ults required right at that moment to contest. And the cart keeps rolling. Architect's Blade, if it's a good one here, they might be able to halt the cart right now, but so much distance already for a one-minute team. Flux pulls several up into the air. Mortality Field keeping them alive in the Supercharger, allowing them to stave off any advancing members of the Hangzhou Spark really going to capitalize. Shui, however, going to be taken down. Dragon Blade drawn out. Architect still already low, but the heels start rolling through. And that will be the end of it. The OT plummets, but a lot further than you might have anticipated for the London Spitfire. They make it through point A and about halfway to point B. Hangzhou, however, they still do have that massive time bank. Four minutes and 38 seconds left to go to try and match that push and exceed it. Yeah, now if if you're London in this case on the defense, I, I can't blame London if they play forward because you need yes. to get like three whip shot kills on the edge of the map. <laughs> you need to get the faster Dragon Blade. You need to, to spawn cap to eliminate that massive time bank. Uh, the problem is, just similar to Hangzhou though, is if it goes wrong, or when it goes wrong, because it's not gonna last forever, even if you're doing uh, having a successful defense there for a while. Then Hangzhou comes out with ult advantage, and they'll still have a really nice time bank. Like, you can hold that for two and a half minutes, maybe, and then Hangzhou, you know, hits A with two minutes time, but then they barely have to push. So, you've got to be careful that you maintain ult advantages. And I think for London, the hardest part about this forward hold, if they're, if they're going to do it, which looks like they're leaning towards it, is you really have to know when to let it go. And, and then try to recontest for A, have that high ground. When it starts to look bad, you have to be okay with letting half your team die while the rest of your team gets back, gets on the high ground, sets up for the respawns. If you stay the whole time and Hangzhou has big ults and they just come around and you're all dead, then they just hold their ults and then fight for the, the point itself, the victory box. Well, again, gonna be operating inside the central train car. Yep, there's a Brigida on the edge. Surprise, surprise. Oh, the oh, oh, goodbye. There you go. You gave him an arm pack on the way down, but unfortunately that's not gonna save <laughs> that's not gonna help. So <laughs> a good a good little early pick cues. I mean this is what you need if you're London. Like this is why I, with oh, the small yeah. with the you know small distance you have and the big time your opponent has, you have to play like this is London. I think. Those are just playing way in the back. Trying to find some picks. Dynamite gonna be lobbed in, looking pretty big. We find Scott's beat, takes him down, and yes. here he goes again! See a QOQ. At least denies the kill credit. This Architect has a blade already, draws it out, manages to find two. They're trying to shut him down. Mortality kill will be finished off, and Custer still operating in the back line. Managed to find that kill, and Shui dashes in onto the dynamited Mika to finish him off. So they lose a couple. They have to displace and reposition. See, this is what I'm talking about. But it was a successful start. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about, though. You've got to know when to walk away. Like, they've got ults coming online. A lot of teams might have been like, all right, we can fight on this, the top of this archway here. We can play forward. But you got to know when it's time to step away. It was a very successful start. Now they've got ult advantage. Because Architect used his blade to try to retake that zone. UOQ right up in the thick of things. Going to be taken down by the accretion. The immortality builds out on the cart, but None of the Hangzhou's part members are playing in it. This way will find J-Mac, but still taking such consistent damage that will get finished off. But he actually managed to find Fuse before falling as well. A very scrappy fight with the Bob now coming in. The Blade, not 
necessarily needed. Yeah, not London will go ahead and hold them back. Not necessarily needed for sure. Definitely, you know, I get a nice you know, way of saying like that was kind of pressure's wasteful, on. But yeah, uh, I mean, the pressure is on. You one small mistake and you lose a map, you're on match point. So I like how passively they're playing though, and then being aggressive when the time is right. They still control this high ground. It's the hardest part for Hangzhou Spark to close the distance off. Blister. Okay, well, the dynamite went out. Blister just received no heals. So it does get chipped away at, and they knock him down. Supercharger goes out from Gooshway, plants it around the corner. A lot of damage there on the J-Mac. Immortality field just does not last very long whatsoever. Bernard going to fall before he can use the flux. Architect in this fight has built up the rest of his blade. He did about 60%, so now has that ready to go. And the ult economy for the Hangzhou Spark starts looking very scary. Yeah, it's, it's, this is the part you're worried about for London Spitfire, where you, you, know, you commit in, you lose the fight, and your opponent gains so many tools throughout that fight. Um, the most important of which being the blade. In this case, for Hangzhou Spark, Architect kind of sharking around here. Uh, they could have used the flux there in the choke, but they want to use it on the victory box. They want to take that team fight on their terms. Okay. Waiting for his moment. The brutality field gone from the side of the Hunter's Spark. And Matrix comes out from highly. Bebe now going to be matching on the back end of that. Flux will find Architect. They push him up into the air, take him down to the HP. And Bernard strikes him down with the primary fire. Kills coming through with the bobble fall as well, and suddenly the Hangzhou Spark are going to be down to a minute because uh, they Hangzhou look to are reset. Hangzhou in trouble. Hangzhou they in big are. trouble. Dragon Blade, Dragon Blade v Dragon Blade. The bomb going to be there for Glister as well. Ooh, that would have been a big stagger onto God's beat, but we can't quite finish him off. Dynamite connects, however, okay. and Architect, he pursues. He goes in aggressively, manages to find they him, and now he's wrapping his way around the backside of London's Pitfire members. Yeah, they need to blade. They need to blade soon. They need to take this uh, man advantage and, and push it hard right now. Architect's looking for that backline pick. They don't have, have seen it. They don't have a flux, so that's a big thing missing here. Bob goes out first, knocks two up into the air. Will get pushed away, and the cart starts advancing. Nearly makes it into the... By the oh, boy. Look at the victory box. Tui goes into the back, cuts down Architect, but Nika finds the kill. Everybody else corralling inside the garage now as they try to stay alive. The Immortality Field's going to be traded out from either side. The Supercharger instantly drops by Gujway as he gets that online. Yeah, Matrix is there, however, from Highly, so they have to try and stay inside the garage if they want to be safe. And they push out, though. They manage to find Bernard. Now looking in on top of J-Mac, which they do. And they will be able to push through for victory. It was a nice little run there from the London Spitfire with just a minute in the time bank, but you can't help but wonder how differently this could have looked if they had contested the cart and drained time away from the Hangzhou Spark. If they hadn't had four minutes and 38 seconds yeah. to try to beat them. That's, I mean, there's those are the two, the two things that we, uh, I think we take away from this map, like in terms of like learning, <laughs> right? Like learning things yeah. to take away are, should they have played that passively on their defense, London? And should Hangzhou have played that aggressively uh, on their defense as well when there's a one-minute time bank there? You put yourself at risk. You gave London a really nice push. That last, um, you know, moment, that last, like, the overtime rounds, I guess you could say, that, that final uh, attack there for Hangzhou could have been, you know, it could have been over a lot earlier. They could have halted things a lot better. The map ended up being a lot closer, I think, than it should have been from Hangzhou's perspective after London played sure. so passively on the attack. So a lot of takeaways there. I want to see how this map gets played by other teams before I judge too harshly of Hangzhou's decision-making because we have seen how successful those whip shots can be and how much uh, that, that corner yep. can, can get you a lot of free kills. But I'm not sold when you're at four minutes time, mate. Can't you just play around Godspeed's Widow and play defensively? I, I think that's the answer, but I don't want to judge too harshly. Well, I have to. we have to go to a quick little break, and when we come back, we'll have the game break. But uh, I have to take care of my camera in the meantime because apparently I banged the desk so hard during London's defense that uh, I displaced the camera, and now it's a little bit askew. So we're going to go to a break. I'm going to fix that, and we'll see you guys in just a few. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Cheez-It Groups. Deep flavor, deep crunch. It's a mind crunch.
Alrighty, welcome back. It is now time for our game break presented by Pringles Wavy. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's a good amount to unpack, I think, Wolf, from these first two maps. Hangzhou Spark leading 2-0 now at match point. Yeah, I think both of these teams are playing to their strengths, um, even though they're running mirror compositions most of the time. Um, the big difference being Godsby's running a little bit more Widowmaker um, because mm. he's pretty confident that he's going to win out the uh, hitscan duel. Uh, and for the most part, he is. Um, and he's playing around that. But otherwise, we're seeing both these teams play same compositions, but differently, right? London's passive style, working for them sometimes, costing them and others. Um, the very aggressive style of Hangzhou Spark, also finding its 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 big moments, um, but also sometimes kind of creating some overextension, some, some wasted ultimates. So uh, I think the series still could go either way. Like, we could have a reverse sweep come through. But right now, it seems like Hangzhou Spark kind of has the edge here, uh, and they're starting to, to feel out London Spitfire's style, and they're punishing it. When London's playing passively, they just also play passively and encounter it that way. When um, you know we're seeing some success with the Ash come through from Glister, then Godspeed just swaps over to Widowmaker and outranges them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's now time to jump into our crunch time again here, Wolf, presented by Pringles Baby. Yes. Uh, so what would you like to discuss? Because you know, I have a, a myriad of topics that I could bring up if you don't have anything prepared for me. Yeah, I, I'll be honest with you. I kind of, like that rant I just went on, I forgot it wasn't actually during the crunch time. So <laughs> ask me anything. AMA. Can we edit it in post? <laughs> Can we just take everything you said and then move it in after I introduce crunch time? Now, uh, I mean, I was going to just generalizing ask, what do you want to see from London Spitfire and what do you think that they need to do to try to turn I, things around? Because for me, just to get this in there, I think they need to play more aggressively. I think they need to just get in there, get in the thick of things. That's when they started looking the best, when they started on their rise of improvement, was when they started just getting up in their opponent's faces, playing super aggressive comps, you know, the Tracer from Glister, just constantly being in the back line. I think that's where they've excelled. I think they can. They have two choices. If they want to play aggressively, then, then yeah, they should keep this roster and and play aggressively and and find that success at least more aggressively than they are now, right? They don't have to play as aggressive as Hangzhou Spark or as as aggressive mm -hmm. as Chengdu plays, for example. But I think if they want to play passively, they've got to match God's Beyond Widow with Babel. I think they should sub Babel in if they're going to play slow, if they're going to play passive, if they're going to play the the hit scan game. Then I mm -hmm. don't think it's I don't think it's going to be Glister in that role who's going to win out against God's Beyond. Not right now, not with how he's playing. So. I feel like those are the two choices I think London should decide between. Uh, my worry is that they might do neither of those things, keep the roster they're playing, play defensively, and then end up just getting 3-0'd here, even though they've had some great opportunities, they've had some great moments um, to, to kind of seize their advantages this series. And sometimes they have, but for the most part, it feels like Hangzhou just is one step ahead. So those are the things I'd like to see from them. I don't I don't. I feel like... Based on my knowledge of the Lens Spitfire coaching staff and what we've seen from them so far, they probably won't do that, but that's kind of yeah. what I'm leaning towards. <laughs> well, I won't spoil it. I'll, you know, I'll leave the leave the tension there. There has been a substitution on the side of London Spitfire, but I won't say who. I'll tell you when we come back for the rest of this series. So stay tuned, guys. We'll have that reveal, and we'll see if the London Spitfire can, in fact, get the ball rolling for a reverse sweep. We'll see you in just a few. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Pringles Wavy. Big crunch, big flavor.
The Overwatch League is brought to you by TeamSpeak, the official voice supplier of the Overwatch League. Alrighty, welcome back. We are getting ready to go through the rest of this series and see if the Hangzhou Spark are going to be able to close things out with a 3-0 or if the London Spitfire can look alive and go ahead and pick up some map wins to extend this. Uh, you know, it has been overall pretty close, but again, I think that London Spitfire at a certain point just kind of have to press W yeah. to the Hangzhou Spark because I think that's when they look the best. The passive stuff, not cutting it for me. Well, we'll go ahead and talk about the sub. I, I, you got me excited because I didn't actually know about it. I thought it was going to be Babel. I know. Almost looked like a big brain, but but it was Sanguinar actually coming in. Um, yep. so highly Sanguinar going to be the support line, uh, for London Spitfire going into what could be the last map of our second series of the evening if they can't turn it up. I don't think the support play was ever an issue. In fact, I feel like Fuse has actually been one of the bright spots on London Spitfire tonight personally yeah. so you know i'm not a huge fan of the sub i don't hate it or anything and it's pretty common to have a substitution like this where you feel like you're bringing in your overall better player even if one of your players who's in is playing well but uh you know that's just my thoughts on the on the, the matter i, I would have liked to see Babel on i mean it's such a great map for widow i mean we see mostly ash here because of the choke points and how much dynamite can give you on the A archway, the B archway here, the drawbridge. Um, but Keep calling it a drawbridge. I know. It's not a drawbridge, but Ready. you just somehow have ingrained that in your brain. Look, people called it a drawbridge for a casting. while. And, and <laughs> I just started, I picked it up, and then later I was like, and I remember That's I remember at one point I realized this, like during Contenders 2018, I was like, it's not a drawbridge, but... <laughs> But I was like, but everyone called it that, right? Or am I just, it's just in my head? No, people call it a drawbridge. I, I adapted the phrase, even though it's not a drawbridge. It does not go up, not at any point, cannot be retracted, does not have cables connected to it. Can, it doesn't. It's not nope. one of those turning bridges. Nope. No. Nope. It is just straight up stone bridge. It's not a drawn bridge, like, by, by hand. It's not a 2D, like, artwork of a bridge. I don't know. No one's drawing anything. Oh. No, they're not. <laughs> and, well, I mean... Based on how things have been going here, I don't think we're going to be having a draw either for Ike and Bolt, even though it is technically possible. Doesn't Taking away like forward it. will just be, yeah, match composition. So I thought maybe we were going to see Sanguinar playing something other than the Brigida, but I mean, given Genji in, that would have been not ideal. But given how Fuse is playing, this, uh, weren't some questioning, but we have to see how Sanguinar is going to play. Maybe this is going to be. Uh, you know, for the team overall, for communication. Okay, yeah. See how things roll out for the side of the London Spitfire as they continue on this attack. Currently getting set up on the corner as the barriers come through. Nice little sun on the QOQ. He'll go ahead and reciprocate with one of his own, but Glister finds an opening shot, taking down Godby. Dynamite up over the top. Will soften up Architect, taking him lower and lower. Mortality field and the right click kills coming up from Bebe. He'll keep him sustained for a little bit longer. But R starts moving up. I think getting joint off stage. Goes out there by that halt, and the cleanup will come through. And very nicely done. The London Spitfire pressed their way up onto the point. And they just wiped the floor with the Hangzhou Spark. Bernard looked really good on that wraparound, too. He did a lot of consistent damage. If you look at the big difference in terms of damage done in, the, in terms of the ults, you can see that it was Glister who kind of really pulled ahead. Otherwise, everyone was pretty similar. Um, it's a nice plays for him on the Ash Big Dynamite there. And Bernard is overextending. Bernard. Yeah, Immortality Field will keep him alive and allow him to exit the castle, but J-Max is still going to be down to about half HP. He's constantly backpedaling to get over towards that card. Sanguinar, in the meantime, will get taken down as a Flux comes out very aggressively from QOQ. Manages to find one, which is going to be highly. Drops him on top of the high ground where he will be safe. Yeah, I, uh, was, I don't know how I feel about the Flux. Like, I think that it helped guarantee them get... Yeah, I mean, I don't know. There's been a few ults today where like you're like, I don't know about that, and I'm like, yeah, I just I want to defend the player, but it's hard. Um, they wanted to control this high ground for sure. They wanted to control this choke, and helps guarantee that is you know long and short of it. Architect has blade from high ground, to drop down and unleash that at any point. But there is going to be an immortality field to greet him because Kyuki did use that. Well, Flex will find two. Blade comes out from three on the side. As Architect has his own. 
One for one so far. I think only going to be able to find that, and it seems like, yeah, it's going to be Genji's passing in the night. One kill apiece, but Architect does get taken down as Ghostie finds yet another nice little pick. He'll finish off the Bob, and now can focus on moving that card forward. Yeah, it was a really nice trade for London Spitfire. They get to take the second part of the engage in their favor. Now some of these members actually fought out here, and this is going to be a pretty easy chase back and free part push. I don't think they're going to get any kills, but as I say that, Ooh. nice halt. Yeah, Shui getting up close and personal. Their dashes back in just to get into the immortality field. Keeps himself safe. Very nicely done by him, and this is opening up so much space for the London Spitfire. This is what I've been wanting to see. Maybe a little too much aggression there, and Shui will get taken down. Really good pace, though, with their time bank. Absolutely. They can continue. This base would be huge. See the Hulk's coming out, looking to try to pull them off the side of the map. Architect gonna be fine. Just gets that little wall run. I'm going to be careful about chasing this far. Yeah, I don't yeah, know Yeah, Architect going to be taken down. Like, that's what? Gonna, yeah, the Air Matrix doing absolute wonders for the side of the London Spitfire. I mean, this is reminiscent. I forget which team it was that played against the Shock. This King's Row this season chased them into one of the side rooms and just got absolutely demolished by an Air Matrix in a very similar situation. Very nicely done. The turnaround starts coming in as Gonsby does take down J-Mac. With the Bob out on the card as well. Christian will connect on the highly. And this has to be the abandon here on the push for the side of London. Yeah. Sengar takes one with him. But at the same time, you know, look at the long run back here. They don't have B. It's not, that's not like a spawn room they're playing out of. So Hangzhou Spark, finally they do get those kills. And uh, the aggressive trade positioning there. And now they can take this high ground control. This is going to be a lot of time loss. Despite the cart's distance and how great of a time they started with, they can't regroup easily here with the full team wipe, and I'm just going to punish with this. They can go ahead and trade a blade too, just like we saw last time in the same position. Traded blade and an even team fight favors them here because they have that you know, respawn advantage, have the high ground advantage. Shui makes his way up top, finds Architect. Flex burned by both. Keep on the hunt there, but needs a little bit of healing to get topped up. They're going to push their way through the castle now. Shield's going to be raised. They make their way up top onto the ramparts. And Shui, yeah, having trouble identifying exactly where he's getting hit from. Architect is playing all angles, constantly circling around them. The hungry shark in the water. Window's going to be coming through now. QOQ and Gushway both getting melted low. Will get finished off the blade. Maybe a little bit of an air one. Again, not necessary for them to finish the fight. A lot invested there from London, literally everything that they had gone on that fight. So if they can get a well-timed recontest for Hangzhou Spark, it could be huge. And they're gonna push out. They managed to get the tag in briefly there from Godsby. Now Architect, but they need the rest of the team rather than, you know, the DPS inting out on the card. Yeah, that's, uh, unfortunately doesn't work out the way they wanted it to, but drawbridge. <laughs> Why did I say drawbridge? I, I was going to say drawbridge. I meant to say, I meant to say the doorway. I meant to say the gates were open. I don't like. Yeah. I don't, I don't, you put the drawbridge even further in my mind, solidified it. But uh, anyway, yeah, they're pushing. The reverse effect of what I wanted. Yeah. They're pushing it through here now. Two minutes on the clock. Not not as strong of a time bank as you would have expected them to have after their great start, but they got delayed massively. Now they're down on ults, so Hangzhou have a lot of stall tactics they can use here. I mean, they've got six ults online. They're going to use one of those to make it five, but. Hangzhou Spark could be extremely ult efficient here if they want to try to stagger one ult at a time in these fights. Blade might be the next tool, especially with the uh, backline so exposed. All in, Flux comes out, manages to catch two. Reflection to deter a lot of the damage coming in. Blister gets his ult ready to go. Window online now as well. Highly going to be using it as the blade goes into the back line from Architect, but he gets struck down instantly. Perfectly done by Bernard. Punishes him heavily. QOQ, however, does manage to break down the front line a little bit with a kill on the J-Mac. Flux will come in. Big Fortify not going to be available as Shui is also going to die mid-blade. Godspeed just gets the body shot on him. Finishes him off, so both Genjis getting absolutely nothing for their ultimates. Hangzhou Spark, though, still looking decent because they're the ones who are maintaining the corner, ensuring that the cart cannot advance as the clock continues to drain more and more for the London Spitfire. Yeah, right now the you know the clock is drained. They've got a supercharger coming up. I mean, Hangzhou Spark going to use an Ant Matrix here, and it's going to actually force everyone back. I don't think they can finish this 
barring a, an overextension from Hongzhou Spark, we've seen a few of those this series, but... J-Mac, yep. Not gonna be good. Not a good look at all. Definitely not. I mean, look how far they have to retreat here. They're gonna have problems touching no, the cart. Yeah, they're gonna have to just start pushing forward. J-Mac, does he just swap over onto the Wrecking Ball? Bernard, in all likelihood, gonna get staggered yet. Sent off the side right there. 10 seconds remaining. Somebody's got a touch. J-Mac is not on the Wrecking Ball. It's gonna have to be Shui, you would anticipate, or the Bomb. I don't think he's close They do enough. go ahead, throw the Bomb out towards the cart, but so far isn't contesting, and yeah, can't make it. You can see where the Bomb is at, firing away in the back line. Yes, it was such a great start for London Spitfire, time-wise, and they really had that cart rolling. And Hangzhou Spark, the first attempt where they played really far forward in that room, when they got killed by the Matrix, Made them look, you know, a little bit foolish potentially. Like at that at that moment, it felt like, okay, well, you just gave London a bunch of old charge, and and in that room, just to the kind of center of your screen to the right there, I suppose more so. Um, that's where that fight went badly. But then they were able to muster up one more defense, took that fight, and then took it hard. Went for, you know, got the full team wipe, and then were able to retake the high ground, and that took London's time bank down from, you know, three minutes down to about one minute. And they, I think, cruised through the uh, B point at like 2.30 on the clock or so. Just a very small time bank compared to where they started from. And then they kind of ran out of yeah. steam, ran out of ultimates there. So Hangzhou playing very passively at the end, which was the most important part. Uh, and, and they found a little bit of success with their aggressive play. So I've been very critical of it tonight because sometimes it feels like just from the caster's perspective where we could see everything, that some of these attacks seem, you know, a little bit foolish or a little bit... Uh, a much of a, I don't know, I don't, how, how should I put this, like, a fool's errand, like, it seems like, okay, I see what you think is going to happen, but it's not going to happen that way, uh, but at other yeah. times they have worked out decently well, so, you know, if they could just beef up the consistency, I like the play style we're seeing. Well, let's see what Hangzhou does now for their attack. Start moving their way forward. Of course, not going to be seeing any changes in the composition so far. So very much a lot of the same. The damage now going out, but Mika's going to be the first one to fall. Bernard finds that first blood. Collapse on top of QOQ to finish off the enemy Sigma as well. So a strong start here for London Spitfire on this defense. Yeah, it couldn't be stronger, really. That was a very nice, aggressive hold. And we are starting to see London Spitfire play a lot more aggressively. You know, kind of like what you were wanting to see, what, what you were talking about uh, in our game break there just after the second map about how you want to see them play more aggressively take these um you know take these fights more aggressively don't just sit back and that is what we are seeing here at least for the first defense see how the second one goes They're definitely ahead in ultimates right now let's good fire yeah, very good spot to try to extend this Getting their way around the side dynamite coming out wants to avoid that not feed any more Charge over to Glister. Architect was a really nice Architect angle. goes on a flank. Yeah. Yeah, so it's building up closer and closer. Now just 20% away from the Dragon Blade. Are not getting too much shielding. You can see London, they've been moved off the point. Second tick now coming through. J-Mac, the first one to advance, makes his way onto the point. Goes dangerously low. Right click heals coming through that Ant Matrix. They'll get a lot of extra value. Go ahead and try to keep them alive. The bomb's going to be tossed out. Go straight in. Helps get rid of the immortality field, but then doesn't last very long after that. Dynamite's going to be lobbed up over the top. He's a little bit of damage through his sweep. Draws up the Dragon Blade. Manages to find QOQ first. Architect draws a blade of his own, but it's very much London Spitfire walking away with the team fight. Just a bit of nice headshot. Shut down the enemy Genji. Yeah. Two ticks picked up, so not starting from scratch, but Hangzhou Spark now down below two minutes to try to close this out with just a Bob rally and a supercharger on the and way. And there's a lot of ways you could delay uh, the streets phase um, if you're uh, London Spitfire, even if this next push does well. And the thing is, with the blade being wasted, essentially, I mean, or shut down, I guess, is the better way to put it. Like, Hangzhou doesn't have a great way to open this one up. Bucks is a great way to start things off here for the side of the London Spitfire. Rally going to be rolling from Sanguinar and Mika. Answering Flux now out from QOQ, and the kills start coming through. And it's Godsby and Architect to finish off their counterparts. The Bob getting some serious Huge value bomb. as Godsby will just go ahead and fill the kill feed. Finishes them off, so the cap will come in. Three minutes, 38 seconds now on the clock. London Spitfire, though, 
in a decent spot to try to recontest. They have that amp matrix to buy time or find some additional yep. picks, plus the supercharger, and Shui is getting close to a blade. Bebe, uh, his immortality field shut down the flux of Bernard, and there was a rally on top, so everyone ended up with high armor during that fight, and then they were able to do their secondary Graviton, or rather, a Gravitic Flux, followed it up with a nice fault, really nice damage coming through. That was well coordinated, kind of turning that good defensive setup into an opportunity for Hamzo to turn things. Yeah, Matrix use in the corner, forces out the Immortality Field, and Hamzo Spark starts shifting inside the castle. They have a window of their own, but Bernard gets right up into the front, absorbs so much of that damage with the Kinetic Grasp, but the kill feed just explodes in favor of London. The team wipe comes through, and cart control is theirs. Yeah, London Spitfire look like they are... This map belongs to them. It almost feels like their defense is better than Hangzhou's ever was. And, you know, I mean, ult efficiency has been good. Supercharger used, but they hold a blade, they have a bob, they've got this choke controlled, and they have high ground. Look at where Shui is. They didn't know the angle he was going to take. Yeah, waiting on the flank. Immortality Field comes out. They finish that off. It takes a bit of damage. The flux comes through, but it whips. QOQ unable to find anybody. Last two found J-Max. The blade didn't get anything. And now Architect's the blade of his own. Again, looking for some picks. They went our ball, Shui taken down. The cart finally going to be able to move here for the side of the Hangzhou Spark. His architect desperately sits in the corner and says, I need healing. And we'll finally start receiving it as the rest of the London Spitfire get cleaned up. But it's good time buying coming in for London. Yeah, it, it is. It was expensive in terms of the ults, but Hangzhou was forced to trade. So you don't feel too terrible about that. You have your regroup here for the bridge with no draw. Um, no drawbridge, just the bridge. And you're yep. able to now set up, you know, this high ground wraparound that they're going for. Dash is good. They'll need to regroup, though, onto the point itself. They're actually kind of, yeah, I mean, they weren't aggressive enough. They're trying to push for them. They're trying to push towards them, but Hangzhou Spark is playing ring around the Rosie a lot better right now. Cart rolling forward. Will get touched. We has to dash through just to ensure that they can test this at the last second. But Architect will find highly, and now with J-Mac falling, it seems like this might not work out. This out rotated yeah. for the London Spitfire. Just straight up. Will not be split spawned. Now two and a half minutes. What they have to defend if they want to pick up a map. Yeah, this is about the same time bank that London had, um, or so. Pretty pretty similar, but London had a great, better start than Hangzhou. Hangzhou had to fight their way through here. I feel like London could have played that more aggressively. The wrap around, they could have committed one way or the other earlier, but they were a little bit indecisive going back to, you know, that playstyle you and I have been talking about all series long. Hangzhou get into a better defensive position as the attackers there, push the cart through. They've got a blade here and a flux. Oh, it's terrifying. It's already so much distance picked up. Great stun comes in. Bernard shutting down that flux. Architect, the deflection goes in, gets rid of the immortality field, and they don't touch the cart! Wow. Not even our observers are ready for that one. <laughs> yeah, well, there you have it. I don't know if Achilles' mic broke in that moment, but no, he's still here. Yeah, he's still here. Um, <laughs> I mean, the, I think we're probably going to get a replay of it at some point. I don't know if we will before we go into our next series or not, or if you guys will see it. But anyway. I don't know. Um, the fight was definitely looking like it was going to go Hangzhou's way. The blade was in a really nice angle. Uh, the flux yeah. was shut down but they were still able to, to kill the Immortality Field early. Uh, and so there was no defending Immortality Field for the blade that was being drawn. And the London Spitfire members were so focused on the right side from like the attacker's perspective on the defender's perspective, left side of that uh, angle. Uh, this is a replay on our screen, so it's not, it's not the one of the C9. It's not really a C9, by the way, but you know what I mean. Of the step off, of, of why everyone's saying C9 in chat right now. Um, <laughs> I can't. I don't have the chat up, but I'm sure that's what's that's sure that's what's going through the chat right now. Well, there's a delay, so they're not saying it yet, but they will be saying they it. They will be saying eventually. it eventually. Yeah. But I mean, then again, the chat calls everything a C9, so. It's yeah, I, I I mean, they could have they could have dealt with it and, and bought some more time, but it was looking like a really good fight for Hangzhou Spark either way. It's just not the way that you want to go out of a series, no. especially when you you know when it results in a an 0-3 loss and when. It was very close at times, you know, for the, the first two maps. Um, so just unlucky, <laughs> but it's time to go ahead and jump into our player of the match presented by Xfinity, and it is Architect, because this guy, 
I, you know, he's been looking cold a little bit in the in recent times, but today he was just on fire. Yeah, he really was. He had a lot of really great moments. Um, with Kenji, he was playing aggressively. He had some great blades. Um, on the other side, things like this about to be great. Give the tip of the hat, though, to our Genji player on the side of Hangzhou Spark. Ended up being a, a series that started off close, but became one-sided, I think, if that makes sense. I feel like Spark eventually just started to outclass as the series went on. Yeah, I mean, that's what netted them the victory in the end. So, I mean, very well played by the Hangzhou Spark. It's good to see them playing at a high level yet again. But it was also... Um, you know, a pretty decent performance from the from the London Spitfire, at least for those first two maps in particular. But guys, we are not done yet. It may be 4.25 a.m. here on the West Coast in Los Angeles, but we press on. We go deeper into the night as uh, the sun gets ready to rise in about an hour's time. We have our marquee matchup of the evening coming up. That is going to be the NYXL going up against the Shanghai Dragons. This is the one that we have all been waiting for, so don't go anywhere because you do not want to miss it.